Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbin. And this week we're gonna be talking to you about boondocking, because that's what we're doing right now. Right. In other words, camping without any hookups, no water, no electric, just off of our battery. Right. And if you watched our video a couple weeks ago about our Victron battery monitor, we're gonna be using that extensively to make sure. It'll be a game changer. I we'll, think. We'll know what, we, uh, what we're using. Yep, and how to better manage our power. Mm-hmm. Holy, but before we get into the video, holy Toledo was this, this was one of our most challenging back ends in a long time. Right. Why don't you are, explain it a little bit, see? We are at Brighton State Park in Island Pond, Vermont, which is a beautiful state park, but oh my goodness was the back end challenging. Yeah, you can, you can see here, Cindy's going to point out to you the, the, we the road. We had a hill that we were coming down. It's a big hill. I don't know if it, the camera shows it. And the big hill where we have to back up is a dirt road there that we have to back up and then squeeze but the road was not that wide to start with right you can see here it's pretty narrow there's kind of like a ditch and everything there so explain how we did it see and these two trees here were ill placed i'm thinking that a bigger rig would not have been able to make it so how many times did it take us three so uh yeah once we got too close to that tree once we got too close to that tree and the third time was a charm, but uh, yeah. I think I think my brother in the field artillery would be proud. We went long, we went short, and the third time we were right in the middle. <laughs> Other words, not three strikes you're out. Comment if you're a field artillerist or the daughter of a field artillerist what you think of going long, going short, and then coming right down the middle. <laughs> there you go. All right, so we're gonna get into boondocking here. Yep, but it's very important that we had the radios while we were doing this because it's nice to have someone with eyes on the back right someone to yell stop when i got too close to a tree right exactly all right well let's have a wonderful evening here on the water site we'll talk about our boondocking should be fun well good morning it is a perfect day sun is shining um but we're gonna go ahead and start up the generator as you can tell we're at about 84 percent after the night capacity so that was pretty good i'm pretty happy with that <clears throat> you can see here from the screenshot um, but one thing whenever you're boondocking is to check out the generator hours. Um, and here at this park, it is from 8 to 10 and 4 to 6. And as you can see, that I have no neighbors right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and get some extra juice. I'll show you how I hook up the generator, how I use it, what I use. And we'll get some juice going there. And continue our boondocking experience. You can see here that my generator rides in an inverted tub. It's the gray tub with the G on it and you can see that it's inverted and what that allows me to do is to store things on top like my secondary toolkit uh, with a generator just in its normal form it's a little bit difficult to store anything on top of it so that's an efficient way of doing it you can see I've got it in the center of the truck because it's one of the heavier items we carry and it's pretty far back except for the width of the blue boy it's as far back as I can get it so we design our load plan to maximize weight distribution within the truck. I would never have it at the back, for example. All right, let's get it unloaded. Okay, you can see I've hooked up the rig, the RV, to, to the 30 amp power cord. I'm gonna use this adapter, which will bring it to 110. We'll go ahead and get things started. That's a Honda one pull. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and let that little guy run there. And now is the time to charge all the devices that don't take uh, 12 volt charging. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug in like my camera, this guy, um, my shaver, etc. Because all the 110 volt uh, outlets now work. Um, we don't, I don't really hook this up to a power management system or my surge protector. Uh, you can comment below if uh, you think that's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary. You're not going to have to get hit by lightning. You're not going to have a surge or a peak or anything like that. And the Honda's protected with circuit breakers. So um, I don't do that, but leave a comment below. 
let's go ahead and plug in some devices. All right, as you can see here, um, I have a power indicator that stays always plugged into one of our circuits that we don't use a whole lot. We have the voltage you can see and the power indicator. And when you're running a generator, because the generator is not grounded to ground earth, uh, you will get an open ground fault. And you can see that with the red light. Normally those two lights are yellow. And, and again, these stay on 724 for us. But that's okay. Um, it's not a safety issue or anything. It's just something to be aware of that you will get that fault. Now, if you have a surge protector, that's gonna cause you a problem because if you connect the surge protector, the electronic management system, EMS, will probably shut things off and you won't get any power at all. I just choose, as I said, not to go with a surge protector for the generator. Um, you can buy a plug off of Amazon that will fool the circuit into thinking you've got a ground, but I just don't worry about it, never have. The other thing I like about Vermont is they specifically said that they reserve the right to uh, stop any generator that's too loud. You know, the Honda EU2000 is super silent, as most of you know, and I know the Yamahas and some of the others are, but we've all been to those campsites <clears throat> where the guy takes the generator from the construction site um, so that he can power his two air conditioners and the thing is just raucous. There's nothing more obnoxious than that. Don't be one of those people. All right, it's time to make the coffee. And as we said, we've always set up our Airstream for boondocking. As such, our coffee grinder is manually operated. It's a Kyocera manually operated coffee grinder. We use only whole beans. And then our primary mode of making coffee is the percolator. That way we can use gas. We don't need electric. We don't need anything like a Keurig or anything else. Everything is designed for boondocking. First step to conserve on gray water is any water left over from our nightly nightstand. That's the first thing that gets added in so that it doesn't go down the gray tank. And we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with water. Do that most important step to boondocking and that's making coffee. And of course, as you can see here, the other improvement we've done is to convert all of our lighting to LED. Now, if you've got a new Airstream, of course, or new RV, they probably come with the LEDs, but we've converted everything, which really helps our power draw. So as part of our contribution to conserving our gray water, which is a 22 gallon tank, we try to wash veggies and throw our water outside. If it's clean, right? If it's clean, yes. And if it's dicey, where would we put the extra water? It would go into the black water tank. Right, because that capacity is easier. It's the gray water that we're limited by. And I use a lot of paper plates, especially to cut meat and to bring things outside. It keeps the dishes to an amount. Plus, if you're making pizza, we get a great way to make pizza using a paper plate. Exactly. So let's see how we're doing on our gray water tank. After three days and a shower, we are looking at 44% capacity. So I think that's not bad. So I think our system's working. So Cindy, are you stargazing? No, we're looking at loons. This is the telescope we take with us and which we were using to see Neowise just a few days ago. Yeah. But it's also a good spotting scope, huh? It is. A little fluffy baby loon over there. There's no doubt we've got a, a juvenile. And then a mama. Not bad. And what's super cool about our telescope and spotting scope for air streaming or RVing is that it comes in this cool backpack. How cool is this? The backpack, the straps. Perfect for RVing. Okay, as you can see, we've turned the generator off and we've switched now to solar. And if you check out this uh, previous video that I made, you'll see why we chose the portable solar panels versus the roof mounted ones. And that's so that I can basically search out the light. Check out what happens to the efficiency if you have just a single branch, which I'll simulate with this. Rake. Look at that, you drop from 7.3 to 5.5. So that's all it takes. 
one little branch and your efficiency is gonna plummet so that's why we chose the portable and as you can see the effect of the branches from that previous one let's go ahead and check out and see how we're doing all right you can see we're pulling in 1.2 amps and you know 1.2 amps really kind of sucks but remember we're only us using right now about 0.67 amps so we're actually um even though that's not really going to charge things like crazy we're at about 93 percent charge on the battery um we're keeping up with it which is all that counts so uh so far so good we're just going to keep seeking out the sun so what are we doing here okay so we're filling our fresh water tanks so i carry two six gallon jerry cans um and but you can looks like an unusual setup yeah the state of vermont has thwarted my attempts to this is a goofy little setup they've thwarted my attempts to make sure my water filter is installed when getting water so that's why i always carry my um water tester my dissolved solids tester which we've linked in our amazon store which you can pick up and because you have no way of filtering this water before it goes into your tank it's a good idea to make sure it's good so let's go ahead and check it out see what we've got we've got our sample cup and remember the cdc the limit for dissolved particulate is 600 ppm so let's see what we got here Get a shot of that see So we're at about 43 ppm which is great i mean the subs water tank typically when i test it's around 50 55 and get it straight out of the tap like this the last campground we were at was 154 and we've seen as high as 700 so that's uh that's good looking water we can go ahead and put this right into our tank and not worry about having to filter it so let's go ahead and do that in this goofy little setup they got And you have to hold it, you just can't turn it on. All right, let's go fill our tank. And if you want to see why the side of the Airstream's all wet, you'll have to wait for our blooper roll in December. We had an epic fail. So another way we save water when we're boondocking is with our little summer solar shower. This thing's pretty cool. It can hang from a tree or something, you can see its back is black, so it absorbs a lot of energy from the sun. You can lay it out on the ground. You can um, hang it from a tree like what we've done. And it actually has a little temperature thingy. And this thing gets hot. I mean, it literally, on a super hot day when you're trying to get um, things going, it can get hot. And you can see it's got a little... See, it's got a little uh, spigot here if you got a little mirror so you can check yourself out when you're showering with proper attire like a bathing suit of course okay so there you have it boondocking right exactly i think we did pretty good that victron battery monitor absolutely key so if you like this video give us a big thumbs up Click the subscribe if you haven't already done so. And comment below if you have any tips or tricks for boondocking. We always love to hear from you. Or if you think we're going to get out of this site. <laughs> we may not, compared we... to getting into it. So yeah. I think we're the only RV around. So um, we come out with RV and Airstream related videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.